matter, Mr. Simpson is again present with his counsel, Mr. Cochran, Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Kardashian, Mr. Blazier, Mr. Douglas, people represented by Ms. Clark, Mr. Darden, Mr. Goldberg, Mr. Yokelson, Mr. Kelberg, Mr. Lynch. Also present is Dr. Lakshmanan. Uh, counsel, earlier today the court uh, found good cause to dismiss two of the jurors presently seated. Uh, after uh, the court made that ruling, uh, Mr. Shapiro, on behalf of Mr. Uh, Simpson, requested leave of the court to file a writ with the uh, Court of Appeal. And the defense has asked for permission to delay further testimony until 1.30 this afternoon to allow the defense to take a writ with the Court of Appeal. The court has granted that request. And the uh, juror in question is... Uh, at the uh, hotel at this moment. So the court will not proceed with any, the taking of any further evidence until this afternoon. Uh, there are a number of other issues that we can get out of the way, though, this morning. Mr. Cochran. Yes, Your Honor, I would just uh, say that we are moving as quickly as we can. As I speak, Mr. Shapiro is on the phone. Mr. Um, Douglas has been in touch with Mr. Dershowitz, who's in Massachusetts. Uh, we right, will. Mr. Cochran, I have also directed my staff to put together a set of all of the sealed transcripts regarding the juror issues regarding that particular juror. And Ms. Olson, my other court reporter, who took the Chambers Conference, is making a transcript of this morning's proceedings right now. We appreciate that, Your Honor. The thing I was going to point out, we may uh, come back to the court with a further request for some additional time, depending on what the Court of Appeals says and how quickly we can move. It is now 1032, I suppose, so that I just want to alert the court to that. But we can proceed with these other matters right now. I'm saying let's use the court time to, to take up these other matters. Yes, Your Honor. That's fine. All right. Shall I address one of the other matters? Please. Your Honor, this morning, um, as a further heads up and as an uh, indication of the concern that I have as an officer of the court, um, I filed this morning and uh, filed with the court and served on the prosecution a proposed admonition to the jury, Ray, Mr. Simpson's possible absence during the coroner's testimony. The court will recall that, uh, that on Friday and other, other occasions, whenever there's testimony regarding the coroner or anything regarding Mr. Cole uh, Brown Simpson, it's very, very difficult for Mr. Simpson. And so that uh, this is a real, real problem. And so I thought about this over the weekend in, in an effort to try and uh, give the court a heads up. We prepared what we would ask the court to give as a, a, some sort of an instruction to the jury should Mr. Simpson have to leave the proceedings. It was very close to him leaving even last Friday. Uh, he doesn't plan to look at the photographs, but just hearing about it is very, very difficult, Your Honor. And uh, I know if he's back in the lockup, under one scenario, the court will want to perhaps wire the lockup. But uh, Mr. Simpson does not want uh, to hear that testimony necessarily. And so what we ask is that in view of the disturbing autopsy pictures, uh, and they are disturbing to everyone, and especially to those who loved uh, the victims in this case, uh, the court is aware of Mr. Simpson's uh, marriage, and uh, Ms. Simpson was the mother of his two children, and we think that the jury, should he leave and absent himself, the jury should be instructed there not to infer anything from his leaving the courtroom, and that uh, it's a normal human reaction for anyone that you love, and that this is consistent entirely with the presumption of innocence. And we try to make it as innocuous as we possible and to just give the court a heads up. Mr. Simpson is going to do everything he can to stay in this courtroom, but he may or may not be able to do that. And we thought it was incumbent upon us to bring this to the court's attention um, as early as possible. Mr. Kelberg. Your Honor, I think Ms. Clark wishes to speak on the matter, although I think for the record, uh, the court is aware that I indicated in chambers I took no position as to whether the defendant could voluntarily absent himself from the courtroom. I believe he probably can voluntarily absent himself and have appropriate waivers for all constitutional rights to confront and cross-examine witnesses. Uh, by being unable to hear as well as see the testimony that's being presented. I also did indicate for the record that the admonition suggested by Mr. Cochran was, uh, in t uh, my opinion, totally inappropriate. It was, of course, argumentative, and one might argue whether this is a performance by Mr. Simpson, the actor, or truly a reflection of Mr. Simpson's alleged uh, grief for his uh, deceased wife. 
but ultimately the jury should only be told in my judgment that the defendant has a right to voluntarily absent himself from the proceedings. He has exercised that right to voluntarily absent himself from the proceedings. That's what I stated on the record. I see nothing which would change my mind, but Ms. Clark and our able team of legal researchers have been hard at work on this matter, and so I don't want to feel like uh, I may have uh, pigeonholed them, but I also indicated on the record that I thought it was appropriate for me to respond to the matter since it was coming in the course of the witness um, that I was called. Ms. Clark. Thank you, Your Honor. We're always grateful for the um, excellent advice of Mr. Kelberg, and he, I, uh, told, I do concur in the language that uh, he has proposed. I think that is the appropriate neutral language to give in a situation such as this. Um, Let however, me ask you this: Do the people concede that the defendant can absent himself? Yes, Your Honor, we do. Um, we did some research on this, and I'd like to cite to the court the Penal Code sections 977 and 1043. Now, those sections in and of themselves do not give the defendant the right to waive his presence, but case authority seems to make it clear that it is at least harmless error, if not permissible entirely, for the defendant to choose to waive his presence during testimony under the case of People v. Price, 1 Cal 4, 324, People v. Pride, common spelling, 3 Cal 4th, 195 at page 251, People v. Benjamin, 52 Cal App 3rd, 63. I will note also that although we don't have an appellate opinion uh, yet rendered in the matter in People v. Ramirez, uh, the defendant did waive his presence for a portion of the testimony. So I don't think that um, it's appropriate for the people to oppose the defendant's decision to absent himself from the proceedings in light of what the manner in which we read the cases. Uh, it would seem to indicate that he can't. Nevertheless, the manner in which he does so has to uh, be in a very discreet manner, and it should not, it should not increase any kind of or, or engender any kind of circus atmosphere or uh, acting on the part of Mr. Simpson. If he wants to absent himself from the coroner's testimony, he should do so before the jury is present, and the jury should be admonished that he is elected not to be here, and he has the right to do so. And no, if if anything additional should be added to that, that no inference is to be drawn either towards guilt or innocence uh, based on his decision to absent himself. Uh, the admonition proffered by counsel is, is argumentative and uh, actually asks the jury to find him innocent based on his, uh, his absenting himself, and that's not appropriate. The appropriate thing is to give a neutral admonition to uh, tell the jury not to make any inferences from his absence, absence at this point. However, the, what seems to be proposed by counsel, and I think is highly inappropriate, is that Mr. Simpson, at some point during the coroner's testimony, perhaps when a photograph is shown, get up and absent himself in a, in a show of, of trauma. And that would be highly inappropriate. This is not the defendant's uh, opportunity at this time to perform in front of this jury. He can have that opportunity when he takes the witness stand. At this point, if he chooses to absent himself, he should do it in a discreet and appropriate manner and do so outside the presence of the jury prior to the coroner's testimony, and he should then absent himself for all of the coroner's testimony and return uh, when he decides to do so, but certainly not until the coroner's testimony is concluded. In that manner, the court will ensure that the proceedings are respectful and have, do not turn into a circus sideshow uh, for maudlin displays by the defendant. Uh, and that he can preserve his right, exercise his right to be absent in, a, in the appropriate manner that shows proper respect for these proceedings. I would also urge the court to make sure that he executes a written waiver of his uh, presence. Well, I'm troubled, Ms. Clark, because 977B sub 1 says in all cases in which a felony is charged, the accused shall be present, which is mandatory language, shall be present, at the arraignment, at the time of plea, during the preliminary hearing, and this is the important part, during those portions of the trial when evidence is taken before the trial of fact and at the time of imposition of sentence. And it goes on to say at all other times the defendant can waive and the waiver has to be in, in accordance with 977B2 and has to contain that language. 1043 also says the defendant shall be personally present except, and then it goes into the disorderly conduct or disruptive conduct exception, and then indicates that uh, 
and then makes reference to 977 A and B. I, I understand, Your Honor, and that's that, that how we began our presentation, is that statutorily speaking, on its face, it would appear that the defendant does not have the right to absent himself, but case authority seems to indicate that he does. Um, in the cases that I've cited to the court, it seems to undermine the mandatory nature of the statutes that uh, we read in connection with this issue. All right, Mr. Cochran, any response to that? Yes, sir. Just to briefly respond uh, to what counsel has indicated, uh, this idea of some model and display is, is just, uh, it, it's, it's foreign to me. In fact, we're the ones who brought this matter up, Your Honor. Uh, to, this is not any act by Mr. Simpson, and we take this matter very seriously. We're the ones bringing this matter up to the court's attention. We're the ones who are saying that there's a great likelihood he will have to absent himself. We expect to do that in an appropriate fashion. That's why I'm bringing it up. I previously had conversations with uh, the deputy in this court, and I was, it was a heads up for this particular court. As regards the instruction, it's exactly what we're saying. Uh, Ms. Clark says we're trying to instruct the jury to find him innocent. All we're asking the court to, to instruct the jury is that they are not to infer anything from the fact that Mr. Simpson had to leave the courtroom or left the courtroom when these pictures were described. And that's a normal human reaction, and it's certainly consistent uh, with someone being innocent. And so that, you know, I'm, we're not trying to be argumentative. We're trying to handle this in a professional manner. We're the ones who brought it up, and uh, we think that he has uh, an absolute right to do that. I've checked with him further. He does not want to, if he leaves, does not want to hear that testimony in the lockup, and will return at the appropriate time uh, with letting counsel know, and then I'll let the court know. And that's all we propose to do in this matter, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Clark, what is the uh, page site on the Pride case? Yes, sir. The Pride case, 195, is at page 251. And All right, how about the price, price at 1 Cal 4th? Price 1 Cal 4th, 324 at page 404, 405. <clears throat> Benjamin at page 76, 77. All right, any other legal issues we need to resolve this morning? I believe the only other thing Mr. Shapiro and Mr. Douglas are now going to try and uh, do work on the writ. I believe that Mr. Matt Tech Ms. Culver. There was an issue that, uh, regarding the positioning of the photographs, and I'm not sure that's been uh, totally resolved, but we can do that this afternoon. I know that the, they, were, they were moved around, but I'm not, I think Mr. Shapiro was involved back in chambers with us at that point. I think we moved it around. The court was out here to, I think, get uh, some observation of the various available <coughs> positions, and, the other and thing we believe we have what is a reasonable location that will give the jurors as good a view of the photos as they can get from their seats and give as bad a view is any view at all of photos to anyone who is not a member of the jury or involved in the case. I'll ask the court to, to allow Mr. Shapiro to see those photographs before we make that final ruling. The last thing that we discussed earlier, Your Honor, is one of scheduling, and I've, I've shared this with the people. Um, as members of the defense team, Mr. Shapiro is still here, in fact. As uh, members of the defense team have moved in and out, uh, Mr. Sheck has now returned to New York, and I'd indicated to them when they got to further DNA evidence, I discussed with Ms. Clark, that we'll need some heads up and some additional time because they have to then return from the East. So we want to not have any downtime once we resolve this problem and then uh, need some advance notice regarding the witnesses. All right, what's your proposed order of witnesses after uh, Dr. Golden? We've had to accommodate some uh, vacation schedules, Your Honor, and I think at this moment it's either going to be um, witnesses with respect to the shoes and the shoe prints or it's going to be hair and trace. If it's shoes and shoe prints, it'll be that set schedule of witnesses and then hair and trace. If it's not, and we can accommodate everybody's schedule, it'll be hair and trace immediately after that. And I need to talk to Mr. Bailey because I think hair and trace will be just two or three witnesses. And he will be available to talk, I think, as of Wednesday. Great. 
Great, that's fine. And, and we I mean, we've agreed to tell council we're, we're trying, we're, we are cooperating in this, and I'm trying to be as accurate as I possibly can be with respect to when the witnesses will be coming up. And I will certainly give um, council as much lead time as we have uh, to let them know, because I know they have to accommodate the schedule of their uh, people in New York. Thank you very much, council. And it is true, Your Honor. We, we want to try and have each lawyer is going to handle the different areas, meet with their opposite on the, um, in the prosecution, and try to see if there's stipulation that can be entered into and that we can at least um, approach from the standpoint of trying to save some time with this jury. So we're trying to do that. All right. Thank you. Your Honor, can I add one other matter on the scheduling aspect? Certainly. Dr. Lakshmanan indicated to me quite some time ago that he committed himself about six months ago to a seminar speaking engagement in Ventura on June 12th. We believed that there was no possibility that we, in spite of all the cross-examination of DNA witnesses and redirects and recrosses, we did not believe there was any realistic <coughs> possibility that he would be unable to make that uh, commitment. And so we told him that several weeks ago. Um, I still believe we will be done with him easily this week. But I do raise that because he did commit himself long before I got involved in the case uh, and long before he had any idea of when he would be called. He has canceled a vacation at our request in June. He was going to India, I believe, in June, and he had to cancel that vacation um, because of the commitment to testify here. So uh, we Is asked the court. wrong time of year to go to India? I'm not certain, Your Honor, that I would know the right time or the wrong time, but I'm sure Dr. Lakshmanan is an expert yes. on that. That as well. All right. No, I don't think that that'll be a problem. All right, then what I will do is read these cases cited by the uh, prosecution, and uh, we'll see what we have. All right, Mr. Uh, Cochran will stand in recess. Ms. Clark will stand in recess till 1.30. Thank you very much. Regarding the transcripts, I'll send my We can get our copies now. Staff is doing it right now. Staff is compiling it right now.